I have not talked about Emily's monologue for some episodes, because we do not have them in every episode now. I think the last one was confession. Maybe they are running out of ideas. Because as I said multiple times the monologues in season 2 were not that good to say the least, so I was not that unhappy that they skipped some episodes. I think this one would have been better used as an opportunity to skip. We have some very good epilogues towards the beginning and the end of this season. But in the middle they get a little too on the nose. Like this one with Emily losing control over her allies. But I liked Conrad's car collection and having pictures of him in front of every car in the garage, shows not only how proud he is of his cars but how big his ego is. And here comes the scene with shirtless Jack. I was speaking about the male meat market in Revenge. And I must admit Nick Wexler looks as if he had prepared himself and his body very hard for these scenes. I adore Margot's dress. The floral pattern and fresh color really makes her look like she is coming straight out of a fashion magazine. About Aiden and Conrad. Funny I never noticed it but in this scene Aiden looks like Conrad's twin. They both are wearing nearly exactly the same outfit. Maybe this should hint to Aiden trying to fit in with the Graysons as Emily needs him as source for information since Daniel moved in with her and no longer works for Grayson Global. By the way where did this big business go? It just disappeared. I mean I know the building was blown away and our Revengers team took all the money away. But what became of all of Conrad's employees? Did they all lost their jobs from one moment to another? Was the firm liquidated? They never told us anything about it. About Emily Charlotte and Victoria dress shopping for the wedding. It always bothered me that Emily has obviously a problem with Victoria touching her. In this scene she almost cannot stand it. Though maybe it is also due to the fact that she is totally nerved by her. But later in that episode with the opera event she totally freaks out when Victoria only tries to touch her. Maybe this is something like a reminiscence to little Amanda who was reluctant to accept Victoria as part of her family. About the dresses. I like that they make her wedding dress this big secret. And I love the episode with the photo shooting in which she is wearing different versions and we have to guess which one she actually chose. Only to get to see that it was a totally different one in the end. Anyway I like the two dresses of Victoria and Charlotte. Even though Victoria hates her dress. This mermaid look and the purple color suits her. And Charlotte looks so tall and grown up in that simple but elegant black dress. Though black seems to be an odd choice for a wedding since you wear black to a funeral. Another thing, I really do not like the two plotting against Emily and Daniel in this case. They or at least Charlotte may only have good intentions. But in the end it is Daniel's choice and the meddling and toying with his and Sarah's heart just made anyone unhappy in the end. I like the war between Emily and Victoria and seeing her desperate attempts to sabotage Emily's and Daniel's wedding was just pure fun. But I always felt sorry for Sarah because she was contempt and not unhappy before she saw Daniel again. Victoria and Charlotte just were toying with her and gave a damn about her happiness. She was just an end to the means of getting Daniel cancel the wedding with Emily. But we will talk about this enough in the next episodes to come. About Daniel trying to find out more about Emily. As I said this and the next season really center about the question of Emily's true identity. Maybe this is also one of the reasons why I like these two seasons so much. The problem for Emily is that she may have a good cover. But as we have seen in season 1 it is not as good as she thinks. Formanda was prepped with little information to deceive reporters and strangers. But when it came to people of Amanda's past like Jack she knew not as much to keep the charade going. Now Emily has the same problem. She maybe knows something about the real Emily Thorne on the surface. 
like that her parents died in a car crash and why she was imprisoned. But she cannot possibly show Daniel any family photos because they did not exchange them. So for the first time I was curious how she would solve this problem. About Aidan Emily and Jack. This was interesting. Aidan's jealousy is making him do really questionable things and it is pretty obvious that Emily lost control over him and his actions. With Jack Aidan is a bit in hot water. He cannot hurt or kill Jack because he means that much to Emily. And it is that childhood connection that makes Aidan fear Jack could be a greater threat to his and Emily's relationship than Daniel ever was. Especially now that Jack knows Emily's true identity. At the end of season 2 Aidan seemed finally to accept Nolan and his role in Emily's life. Even more as he has really no romantic interest in Emily. The same cannot be said about Jack. So in Aidan's queer mind he needs to get rid of Jack in order to reconquer Emily's heart. It is interesting how they manage to not overstep this thin line here. Obviously because of Barry Sloan's great acting skills. Cause neither his British accent nor the noble tone and gesture of granting Jack a chance to get out of this mess occurs out of place. Even though Aidan created this threat himself. Interesting too that Conrad is targeting Jack while Victoria has in the end a better target in Aiden. In this season she is more ahead of both her husband and Emily. Not only because she gets to know the truth behind Emily's scheming but also draws the right conclusions. While Conrad still has no clue and works together with Aiden twice and confides into Emily more than once this season about Nolan getting tired. Another layer of Emily losing control and trust of her allies. I still think it was brave of the writers to address this weary feeling. Cause after the mess in the last season even diehard fans as I felt that they had to end her revenge ender and give us some sense of achievement here. Major spoiler alert. Obviously the finale of this season was the best and most fulfilling cause she finally took her revenge on both Graysons. We all had the feeling that they had to reinvent the show after this. So I am one of the fans who think season 4 was not a total waste. But we will dive into that when we talk about the season finale. For now Nolan speaks for the audience when he points out that he needs Emily's revenge ender to end one way or another. I can understand him cause after all the heartache with Padma Nolan fears that her revenge ender is screwing up his happiness again. I'm kind of tired of the way that this stuff is constantly screwing up our lives, especially stuff you want the most. I just want this to go smoothly and for this to end. Another thing about the writing here. They have really improved in making it more organic. Till the wedding we get multiple hints from Nolan, Jack and even Grace and family members that her plan is probably going to fail. I Milf always thought it was a bad idea using the wedding to take them down. Even if she got so far as getting Victoria arrested. What made her so sure that she would testify against Conrad? Maybe she would have been stubborn or too afraid of him. Since he surely would have the means and no qualms to kill her before she could give any statement to the police. He tried it before in season 1. So why not again? So I was not at all satisfied by her big plan. And since she got that major roadblocks on the way I thought till the end it would have been better if she had stopped this plan. That was destined to fail from begin with. There were multiple red lines she overstepped with Daniel in her desperate attempt to save the wedding. But again we will talk about this later when we get to these episodes. For now Nolan is right that she needs to end this before she is causing her allies more harm. Sadly this prophecy came very true in the finale. And here comes another sexy scene. They really pile them up this season. 
but since they all look this handsome I am not that much complaining. This scenery is just beautiful. Again the glittering water of the pool. And the sea in the background. Madeline Stowe who portrays Victoria looks astonishing good as well. She can really keep up with Barry Sloan aka Aiden. But I feel really sorry for Aiden in these episodes. He came back to help Emily and is put in a very bad position again. Unlike Emily who only has to keep Daniel in check. He is in the eye of the storm at Grayson Manor and constantly at risk to get exposed by either Conrad or Victoria. And then he gets opposites tasks from both Graysons which he cannot possibly satisfy both. On top Victoria is fueling his already great jealousy of Jack by pointing out that Aiden is Emily's past while Jack is her future. Must have hurt him to the core constantly be reminded on their special connection. About Emily's and Victoria's outfits for the party. I like the style of this season. Not only Charlotte all women look a little different. It seems Margot's French style update has lifted their fashion sense. Victoria's dresses became more elegant and less aggressive. This golden dress looks simple but it suits her well. I dislike Emily's style with this black bandeau top and the trousers. It shows off a nice silhouette and was something different but was just not my taste. About Pascal Le Marchal Margot's father. This story arch was maybe the most intriguing for me. Not only because he was one of the few targets in this season. They really made us anticipate his arrival since they talk about him all the time. First through Margot who seems a bit intimidated by him. And later when he got on Emily's radar. Last but not least because his strong connection to Victoria and his past with both Graysons. About Emily, Aidan and Jack again. These two scenes were intense and I really enjoyed them. First Jack exploding and finally throwing all his righteous anger on Emily's. Because since the first moment he is the one who suffers the most from Emily's revenge ender and her sideways. First he falls in love with poor Manda without knowing anything about their identity swoop. Then he is losing this one-time chance of happiness and has to raise their child on his own. Later he is losing the last part of the family he had left with the death of his brother Declan. And because Emily cannot and will not surrender her vendetta against the Graysons he is constant danger not only to lose her, too but to be targeted because of his connection to her. So he and his family are in constant danger because of her. And here comes one of my favorite quotes of Jack. Because he is so right with this. Emily has changed a lot since she began her vendetta. And she is still changing and becoming more and more like her targets the Graysons. An underlining theme they stole from the original but explored very good throughout this and the next season. Cause the nearer she gets to her goal the more Emily is blurring the lines between her and Victoria. Finally since Jack has more than ever the ability to go under Emily's skin she is loading all the tension and pressure onto Aiden. Their fight is even more intense cause we have this underlining tension that they both are still very much in love. I love this underlining layers in their relationship. Since the second half of season 2 they both are not only lovers. He is her most trustworthy ally and also something like a comrade in arms. Because he is trained and recruited by Takeda in the same fashion as Emily he is more capable and skilled like any other of Emily's friends. So we have always this underlining theme and tone about tactics and motives from war and combat theories. For real experts their talk will be more than superficial but for me it was enough to be convinced that they both know what they are doing. About Patrick's art. In contrast to his beautiful outward appearance and the cliché Patrick is not that dumb. 
I like that they made him very much caring and full of empathy not only for his mother but also in his relationship with Nolan. I wonder what he would have said and thought if he knew about all the skeletons in Victoria's closet. Now that I see him again I regret that he was not coming back for a little appearance in season 4. Major spoiler alert. I know the episode with Victoria's fake funeral was cramped enough. But would have been nice to see him react to her death and all the revelations before when Emily gave that TV interview. Anyway I actually like the painting he is working on in this episode. I love paintings and poster art that play with water and its glittering and mirroring effect. Reminds me of the really nice water lily paintings from Monet. About Emily and Daniel fight again. And now comes the third conflict. This season is really rough on Emily. She has constantly to defend herself in front of the people who mean the most to her and now also in front of Daniel. I can only quote Nolan for this cause he said it best that Daniel not only changed but evolved. As I said before he pays far more attention to details something Emily slipped to notice and therefore cannot react to this. Cause it has become increasingly difficult for her to fool Daniel since the end of season 2. Daniel finally recognizes what can be the most true analysis of their relationship since the beginning. He is just playing a role in Emily's plot. That is all Emily wants from him nothing more. She is neither interested in building a real future with him not in his real emotions or needs. So pulling the trigger and telling her he cannot marry her was maybe the best and most thoughtful move of Daniel. He could have spared himself a lot of trouble and heartache if he had broken with Emily completely here. About Emily's problems with Nolan. This is a really huge problem not only inside but outside the plot. Spoiler alert. How can she make Daniel believe that she is actually pregnant of him when they have such big problems? I mean she cannot even stand being around him. How can she be intimate with him? This is even more questionable than in season 2 cause Emily is planning her future with Aiden while she seems to be still sleeping with Daniel. Otherwise he could not be convinced by her lie. So I guess Aiden is double screwed in this season. First because Emily cannot let go of Daniel if she wants to go through with her plan. And has to sleep with him at least one time to make sure her plan with the fake pregnancy works. Second because Emily is still attached to Jack and her feelings seems to blur in the same way as they had with Daniel for some time in season 1 and 2. About Charlotte's confession. They really tricked me here. Cause it is plausible especially with Conrad's bad dream from the second episode. However Victoria using Charlotte again to save her precious son Patrick was a far better and intriguing story. Victoria always choose Daniel over Charlotte so why should it be different with Patrick? Conrad's reaction was surprisingly soft and made me feel sorry for him. He still loves Charlotte more than anything else in the world even though he knows she is not his real daughter. As I said before Emily should have known that she was his weak spot. But maybe she does not want to see it cause she is reluctant to use Charlotte this way. Cause her final plan was something with the potential to destroy their relationship for all time. And Emily knows that far too well. About Emily and Aiden getting back together. I have waited for this since they cleared that he was not on Victoria's side and wanted to destroy Emily. And I was genuinely surprised that they waited so long to bring them back together. I really thought him coming back would mean they would pursue their menage a trois. Especially because he was that jealous of Jack. It must have been obvious for Emily what Aiden is still feeling for her. Anyway this is still one of my favorite scenes I use in almost all of my Emily and Aiden videos. Not only because of the passionate kiss but because of the stunning sunset. And her quote which sums up their relationship and Aiden's meaning for her pretty good. What is funny that we get for every Aimly scene an equal Demily scene. 
I assume they do that on purpose. Not only to balance it out cause they are shippers for both pairings. But also to show how twisted her personal life is because of her vendetta against the Graysons and how she plans it. About Emily open up to Daniel. Again one of my favorite scenes from this season and with Daniel and Emily throughout the whole show. Definitely my top 10. Because here she is as honest as she can be and I assume her tears are not at all fake cause she really gives into this moment. You can see it when she talks about her father and at the end when Daniel is embracing here. I think for the first time he sees how fragile this strong woman can be and is truly sorry for her that she had to endure such a hard life. I must admit the idea itself to talk about her parents and showing him the photo of poor Manda's family was brilliant. Her internal joke that this feels not only so long ago but like it is not even her life was great. And underlines again how twisted her life has become. Even though they show us no flashback here for me her story is true. Cause one of the earliest flashbacks when she was talking with Dr. Banks in season 1 we saw her sitting together with David. Drawing a picture and him working on his laptop while a storm was raging outside. So maybe that was the incident she is talking about to Daniel. By the way I really miss those flashbacks from season 1. I think besides those flashbacks related to Jack in season 2 we never saw a new one with David. In this season we have to wait till the wedding is over and she has to overcome her blackouts to see a new one that fills in some blanks. But they never get this significance they had in season 1. Maybe they thought it would not have been necessary anymore cause we already know enough about the conspiracy and her former life. So they concentrated on the past of other characters like Victoria in season 2 and Aiden in this season. But I still hate that they only reused old footage and shown us only a short amount of new flashbacks in this and the next season. Must be due to the fact that Emily Allen Lind the actress that portrayed young Amanda had become too old to play a child of Amanda's age. So in season 4 they used her sister which made the whole timeline even more confusing. As they used her to show us a much younger Amanda within the backstory with her mother Cara Clark. Anyway I think the scene could have been better if we had seen some little snippets of little Amanda and David again. But Emily's performance in this was marvelous she really can hold the thin line between making us believe she is speaking from the heart, still having the question and suspicion in mind she is faking it just to make Daniel pity here and forget about their fight. About the end montage. Again a great compilation with some of my favorite songs from the show. The lyrics are still a riddle to me but they seem to fit somehow. And again I like the vibe of the song. Perfect transition to Nolan and Patrick with his painting. Quite on the nose but makes it clear that he is some kind of obsessed with Nolan as well. Another thing about the kissing scene. I know many are criticizing that we get only this kissing scenes in half shadow with Nolan and his male lovers. That may be true but do not forget that we have not that much sex scenes with Emily either. And she is the lead of the show. So for me that was no big deal. In contrast I think the glittering water and the shadows add some atmosphere to this scene. Making out in the shadows reminds me of the first sex scene with Emily and Daniel in season 1. That scene looks great too and is one of my favorite sex scenes from the very limited numbers of scenes. The shadow underlines the danger cause in both relationships you have the threat that feelings are taken too far and people will get hurt. Because they are too much engaged with a dangerous Grayson.